This is what you're going to build by the end of this video series. Welcome back to the series on how to build a Discord bot. This is the fourth and final video in the series focused on deployment and hosting of the bot. In the past, we set up the bot, we built out logic for it, and we set up a database to persist data beyond just in memory. And now we're here to focus on, instead of running the bot locally on our machine, we're gonna deploy it somewhere. A couple of things to get out of the way at the beginning of this to decide on hosting providers and how we can go about running the bot. Well, one, you could continue to run the bot on your own machine. If you leave your machine on 24 seven, or maybe you have a spare, machine that you leave on 24 seven that can keep the bot running, then by all means, go ahead and do that. That's a great solution that you can run with and it's cost effective, right? Then on top of that, when it comes to hosting providers, there's so many out there, so many options you can choose from. Just to name a few, the big ones, the cloud providers that are out there, Amazon Web Services or AWS, Google Cloud Platform, GCP, and Azure, those are the big ones. And then there's a bunch of other more unique ones like DigitalOcean or Render.com or Fly.io or Railway or Hostinger, Hostinger, I don't know, DigitalOcean, did I say that one? There's so many out there. Anyway, out of all of those, and there's probably more that I'm missing. In fact, if there are some that you like, let me know down in the comments below because I don't know all of them and I would love to explore some more options that are out there. But regardless of which provider you choose, you should choose one that you like and are familiar with. And if you don't have one, you can follow along with me. I'm going to be using render.com, which I'll go into more detail shortly. But regardless of which one you choose, the concepts we step through in this video will apply for the most part, because majority, if not all hosting providers nowadays have some integration with GitHub, which is what we've been using throughout this project. And we're going to be deploying from GitHub to the hosting provider via the integrations that a lot of these providers offer nowadays. One last thing to note with all this is each of these providers have varying pricing levels and free tiers and what's offered in those free tiers. Some of them have credits that you get and, and there's a limitation on how long you can use those credits to like 12 months and so forth. So I'm not going to focus on that. There's other videos out here on YouTube that you can go check out where they're using Replit as an example to host a Discord bot for free and then having some other service that pings it to keep it alive. If you want to go that route, I encourage you to go check out those videos. They're great. They do a good job of explaining that and you can run with that with deploying this bot that we built together. But for those of you that want to go this route and the solution that I'm going to be working with, Stick around for the rest of the video to see how we can do that. Speaking of free, one thing to note with Render, which is the one I'm going to be using in this video, they do have a free tier and there is a possibility that you can use it in that manner. But we're not going to go that route because we need to change the code a little bit more than I'd like to for the purposes of supporting that route. All right, so let's get into deploying the bot to Render.com. Now, one thing to note as we prepare to deploy to a hosting provider like render.com is that all this time we've been using a local DB file as our database, which is great, especially for local development to host the data and keep things persisting across the times that the bot's running. But if we continue to go this route and even push this up to our repository and then have that deployed to our hosting provider, then anytime we have a new deployment, any new data that was stored in the file at the hosting provider is just going to get lost. So we need to get a more robust solution beyond this to have our database hosted somewhere else. And this is where Terso comes into play. Now, I briefly mentioned Terso in a previous video, but they are also a hosting provider for LibSQL, which is the database technology we're using, which is a variation of SQLite. Now, they offer a very generous free tier. If we look at the pricing, you have the capability of doing monthly rows read a billion times and 25 million monthly rows written. Now with a bot like what we've built here, the Wordle bot, you're likely not going to hit these limitations within the free tier because you're not gonna have that many people playing the Wordle game and sharing the results. Maybe you will. If that's the case, then you're probably gonna have to move up to a paid level. But for our purposes of this video, we're gonna be using the free tier. So the next step here is for us to sign up for a free account. I personally just use my GitHub account, but you could use Google or go the email address with username and password approach if you'd like. Once you're signed up, you should see a view in the dashboard or overview like this over on Terso's website. You wanna click on the databases button up here. And the first thing you're gonna to need to do, which I've done already, is probably create a group. You can give it a name, choose the fly.io hosting provider for that and that purposes. And then whatever location you prefer that would be closest to you and most of the people that are using are part of your community in your Discord server. And then click create group. After that, you're gonna click on create database in the top right hand corner. You're gonna give it a name. You're gonna make sure you have the group selected that you created. And then you're gonna click create database. All right, now that the database has been created, what you're gonna to wanna to do is 
on the right hand side where it's right next to the edit data button there's this little three dot button that you can click for another menu we need to create token so select that button right there now you could choose the expiration for it to be never i'm going to choose one day just for the purposes of this video but make sure you choose whichever one you feel comfortable with if you choose one to have an expiration just note you're going to have to update that in the hosting provider whenever the this one expires so i'm going to go with one day for now and then for access we need read and write access to the database so we make sure that that is selected which is on by default then you can click on create token now here is where you're going to want to copy the token which is the first value there and then the second one is the url that we're going to need to access to the database in this hosting provider via terso so copy those and save them in a safe place because we're going to need them later all right so next step is to head back over into your code editor visual studio code opening up the project that you should already have open there and we need to make some changes here slight changes to start using that new database instead of the local database the first thing we're going to do is we're going to go to drizzle config we need to make some changes here in how this is working. First of all, we're going to change the dialect to Terso and save that, which then we're going to need to change the DB credentials. The URL is going to be different, which will change that as an environment variable. And then we need an auth token. The value for that is going to be an environment variable as well. So let's add that process env and we'll call it Terso token exclamation point. Save that. Okay, there's one more place we need to go and make changes to the code. So open up the source SRC folder, DB, and then index.ts. Just like we did with the drizzle config, we're also going to need to update the create client from the lib SQL module or package to use this new database. So in here, we're going to modify this a bit, and we're going to also add the auth token option with that same value. So now remember you saved the auth token and the URL as before. So we're going to go over to our ENV file to test this all out locally. All right, so let's add the Terso token, and then we're gonna paste in the value of our auth token that we got from Terso when we created the database. Okay, and then the last part is to set up the URL, even though we're saying DB file name, for simplicity, we're just gonna comment this out. So we have that for later, and we're gonna say DB file name equals, oops, equals, and we'll paste in the URL from before, which is, in my case, it is libsql, which is the protocol, and then discord wordle db, with my organization name and terso.io. We save that, close that, bring up your terminal. And this is the next step we need to do. So the next step now that we have everything configured to point to the database hosted by terso and fly.io, we need to push the schema that we have defined locally in the project here up to that database. And the way we could do that is using drizzle kit. So we're gonna execute that in line and as a command line tool. So we're gonna say bun x to execute it, drizzle kit, hyphen kit, and then we're gonna say push. And now those config changes have been set up in Terso. So let's go back to the Terso website to double check that the database received those schema changes. All right, we're back over at our database. Remember it's Discord Wordle DB if you named it the same, and you can click on the edit data button in the top right-hand corner and click on Drizzle Studio. And as we can see here, we have the players table on the left-hand side, scores and Wordles table, along with the columns for each one. You can see there's the ID, Discord ID, Discord name, scores, and for the wordles as well so everything worked out successfully we have everything set up to be using this as our production database all right with that all set up let's do one more thing and double check that all this is working successfully pointing to that new remote database so we're going to run bun run src index.ts okay so we don't see any errors or issues there let's test out sending in a wordle result in the discord server and see if it gets stored in the database Okay, we're back over in the Discord server, and I'm just gonna copy a previous result, paste that in. And we can see the bot is running and working. It seems to have stored that there. So let's head on over to the Drizzle Studio up in Terso on the website to see if we can see that data in there now. All right, we're back over in Drizzle Studio from Terso. Let's refresh the data. So the top right-hand corner, we can click on refresh, and we can see that there is a Wordle now for game number 1,275 has references to a score so let's click on the score that has one attempt for this player clarkio test right there so everything worked as we anticipated or expected for the production database now the one thing we can do is go ahead and delete this record too so we don't have any test or temporary data in here that we don't want so now let's head back over into visual studio code and commit those changes to the repository so that we can prepare to deploy it to render.com all right, so we're back over in Visual Studio Code. We're gonna stop the bot from running. We're gonna say, you know, git add dot for everything that's changed. I've already done all this prior to this point in the recording, but you would say git add everything, git 
commit with a comment, you know, let's say initial solution and all that. And then we're going to do uh, git push and that's going to push it up to the repository for us, which is for me, Clarkio Discord bot demo. And with all those changes up in the repository, now we're going to head over and talk about render and get things set up over there. All right. So in your browser, head on over to render.com. The first thing I want to talk about is the pricing. As we mentioned earlier, I'm using the hobby pricing, which is $0 technically for some of their free capabilities there. But the one caveat to that, we scroll down is we get into the compute pricing section here under services. We click on show pricing. There's two distinctions I want to call out here. There's web services. So if you have a web API or something like that, that you're going to run and you can hit that API, you can go that route and they have a free offering that way, which is $0 a month for pretty good resources on that instance there. And then there's background workers, which is what I'm going to go with for the purposes of this to simplify things. But I'll talk about how you can go the free route if you'd like. OK, the background worker is essentially what we're doing. We're running this discord bot in the background. And it's just constantly listening for messages in the discord server that are pertaining to Wordle results. So this perfectly fits our needs for the type of project that we have built out. So the next step from here is if you're at render.com in the top right hand corner, clicking on get started. And then you can sign up with a bunch of options, GitHub, GitLab, Bitbucket, Google, or an email. I recommend using GitHub because that will make the integration seamlessly to pull that repository from your GitHub account and use that as the source to deploy from for render. All right, once you're signed up with render.com using your GitHub account, you should see a dashboard or overview of your projects like this for your workspace. In the top right hand corner, you'll see a button called add new. We're going to click on that and we're going to choose background worker. This will bring you to this view. Now, if you have a public Git repository that you want to deploy from, you can do that. Or if you're using container images, you can do that. But with this, you can see it's not really showing my repo that I need for the source code for the project that we just did. So we need to add that in there and make sure render has access to the repo for the source code of this Discord bot. So in this view, you have a couple of options in terms of how to grab the source code for render to deploy and run on their services here as the hosting provider. You can use the Git provider, which is should be set up since you signed up with GitHub already. You can use a public Git repository if your repo is public and just point to that. Or you can use Docker container stuff, but we're not going to get into that. So if you potentially see your repository already here, then you can just go ahead and click on that and skip to the next section. But if you don't like me, you limited the repositories that render has access to. You're going to need to add that new repository so that render can access it. In order to do that, you can click on the credentials drop down the right hand side there click on your github account and then click on configure in github this will open up a pop-up window to github where you'll go through the auth flow on github's website again and there will be a step during that process that will have a view to let you add the repository that you need really quick for those of you following through this flow this is where you'll land you'll likely have the same option selected like me that says only select repositories otherwise you can choose all repositories if you want but if you have this one like me selected then you're going to click on this drop down find the repository that you want and choose to have it added and then click the save button down here and you'll be good to go. You can close out this pop up window. OK, once that is set up and render has access to your repository, you should see it in the list here, which I do this discord bot demo. So you click on that and then you click on connect from here. We need to change some things around. The language is going to be node. The branch is going to be main. You can choose whichever region you'd like that are available to you. There's new regions available too if you need to choose one. And then the root directory is going to stay the same. The build command is going to be bun install. And the start command is what we've been running all along. Bun run src index.ts. And then from there, we need to choose their instance type. So we are going to leave it as starter, which is going to cost $7 per month for that. And last but not least, we need to, and this is the key crucial point that if you forget to do this or you don't do it or you get these wrong, then the whole thing is not going to work and you're going to be wondering what happened. Why is this not working? And it's probably because your environment variables have not been set up in the hosting provider that you're using. So one of the nice things with render is that I can actually just copy my .env file from Visual Studio Code from my source code and paste it in here using this add env option that is available. And it's nice. It will automatically parse out your environment variables and set things up within render for you. Now I'm going to go do that off camera and then we'll come back in afterwards. You'll see a button after you paste in your environment variables that says add variables. And then you should see this result in the parsed out discord bot token, DB file name and Terso token. Once we're done with that, we're going to click on deploy background worker to get things going. 
All right, so this will take a few minutes to go and pull the source code from your repository, run the bun install, and then actually start running the application for you with bun run. So we'll pause here and come back to when this is all done. All right, so at this point in time, the whole deployment process has finished. You can see the logs of what happened there. It ran the bun install, it did the build and then uploaded the build results to the hosting provider and then started running source index like that. We can see our log messages from earlier whenever we were running it locally is the same logged in as Wordlebot 9389. So now we can go and test things out. All right, back over in our Discord server where we've added the bot, we can copy and paste this in again and we should see a response and we do. It is working. Let's double check that the database received the results from the bot running on render.com now instead of our local machine. All right, back over in the Drizzle Studio running on Terso. We'll refresh the database again and we do indeed see that it is working. We have the Wordle added in there for 1,275. A score was recorded and the user was created. The player was created rather from the Discord user. All right, so that's our bot complete and running in production with a production database using Terso and LibSQL hosted on render.com using bun drizzle ORM and all that fun stuff. And I hope you feel accomplished with doing that. Now, if you know of other hosting providers that could be run like this for free, I'd love to learn more about the options that are out there that I might not be aware of. So please feel free to comment below to let me know what ones you like and tend to use yourself. Now, I mentioned earlier too, that if you wanted to, you could go a free route with render.com. So let me very briefly show you that, and then we'll close things out for this series. All right, you may recall that when we were looking at the pricing model that render offers a $0 per month web service option. With that, you need to have an API or something that's running on a port that render can detect and keep it up and running in that way. So what you would need to do is create a, inside the SRC folder, create like a server.ts file and use whatever web framework you would like to spin up a dummy API, like a hello world API. You could use Hano or Alicia JS. If you're continuing to use Bun, they're great web frameworks that you can use and have an API endpoint that you can then use and have render understand that this needs to be up and running as a web service. Now, the one caveat to that though, is render will shut down the service or make it go idle whenever there's a long period of inactivity. I forget exactly what the duration is, but it's something around a, a, a few minutes or so. So what you can do in that situation is what you'll find in other videos on this topic of building and deploying a Discord bot for free, which is set up some type of service that will ping your API on a periodic basis to keep it alive and active and running. So you can go that route if you'd like. I'm not gonna go and demonstrate that, but I wanted to at least point that out as an option if you wanna stay within a free approach to running and hosting your Discord bot. All right, that does it for this video and our video series on how to build a Discord bot. If you got value out of it, be sure to like it down below and share with someone who could put it to use. And if you made it this far, subscribe to the channel so you don't miss out on upcoming videos. Thanks for watching and happy safe coding everyone.